Hey everyone, welcome back. It is time for another wrestling review. This time we aren't reviewing one show, but a series of shows. It was 11 different shows over the course of the last three weeks. That's right. We are going through the new Japan Cup and talking about some of our favorite matches, some of our highlights, some of the main event matches, some of the storylines and where it's going. It's not going to be a full on match by match review because there was about what? At least 110 matches. So this video will go on forever. So we're just going to do it in a little different format because it was more of a tournament. With me, once again, we have Campo Reviews, man who reviews movies, TV shows, and now wrestling. Joining us once again, Campo, welcome back. Hi. Hello. I work here. He does. We don't pay him, but he works here. Unpaid intern. If you need his information, it'll be down in the link in the description box below. Go on, give RLG cast a, a sub. Like, it doesn't cost you anything. Chances are, if you sub me to me, you'll sub to him, too. Yeah, just do it. Just do it. So, with that out of the way, New Japan Cup, um, overall thoughts, how, do you, how much of a success do you think this year's was? I think, narratively, it struggled a bit in the beginning, but it really picked up steam. It did. As it the second half of the tournament did. Um, I would say the entire it's... first round really struggled to pull my interest. Yeah. Those first four or five nights, very much so. Our back, our brackets were busted by, what, the second round? Yeah, minus David Finley. Yeah, I think that's, that's true. That's the only one. So, I mean, with that, I have the... Um, brackets for you right here so look at that i was ready for you guys i have the uh winner uh crossed out because i don't want to spoil it for you guys but um as you can see the final already is something we did not expect especially I, okay, well, we expected david finley this one and there's yeah, a whole story there's a whole story with that one. There, there's more there's a lot of story here that built up really well so okay let's just talk in the first round mm -hmm. um i don't know how chase owen's got to buy <laughs> yeah, because all all champs apparently all champions got a buy. So Kenta got a buy, but Jeff Cobb got a buy. Well, so why did Chase buy. Owens get a buy? Right, Zach got a buy though. Yeah. Why did Khan get a buy? Because he's the KOPW. No, why did Khan, Khan why is didn't... the uh, Rev Pro? Rev Pro. Then why didn't Shingo get the buy? Yeah, I know that doesn't make any sense. Right? Did Yoshi Yoshihashi got the buy? No, but Hiroki Goto did. Right. But Yoshihashi Imagine if we did. got to see Goto fight Yoshihashi. Like, isn't that something you wanted? Anyways, yes. um, in this first round, I mm -hmm. uh, Aaron Hanari versus Shingo was a really good match. Yes. Uh, um, it's, same thing with Umino and Takahashi. Umino Takahashi was good. Uh, Yoshihashi versus Kyle Fletcher was good. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, Naito versus Phantasmo. Naito versus Phantasmo was excellent. Like, I, like we're, we weren't shitting on... The, the quality the, the matches it, it's the, there was no like storytelling it wasn't properly given any sort of narrative coming into yeah. this um where like the g1 had so much going on uh evil so coming into renarito was really upset me yeah like, because uh, renarito is prominent on the, all 11 nights like he was there this, every night i'm gonna be honest with you the house of torture stuff needs to stop Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're going to be in another title match for the trios titles coming up is bothers me so much. Yeah. Yeah. There's I don't so think... many good trios. Why is it always House of Torture? Uh, we just saw one. Like, I mean, yeah, they're not part of New Japan, but you got uh, you got Time Machine. Yeah. Who Send works them. so. I want to see them versus uh, the Elite. Yes, that would be something. But fantasy booking there. But uh, yeah, I mean, this was uh, this was a good show. Like, I mean, like the first round, the matches were good, but it struggled. And by maybe the towards the end of the tournament, especially seeing the same matches, just different combinations of the same people over and over again. I think that's what got a little tiresome. There wasn't that much variety. I think Okada was only what on two of these shows. Yeah, uh, I the. It got to the point where I won't even lie to you. I think by the fourth night and onwards, I didn't watch any of the pre matches. I just skipped to the, the, uh, I watched the who's in it and then I skipped to who won it. Yeah. I didn't even look who won. I just, I literally just watched because, like, on night one, two, three, none of the trio's matches were good. None no. of, or like zero or whatever the multi tag man 
Yeah, tag the multi tag matches. matches. Yeah, they were, none of them were good. It was just a huge waste of time. And I don't. We're not rating this event on based on those. No, it's, we're ba- we're rating the event based on the actual tournament matches. Yes, which which were mostly good. Okay, so we're done in the first round. So we get to yeah. the second round. Um, this one was a good match. Yes, and but Sonata versus Taichi was not a good match. It, no, I I understood that they were trying to tell us some kind of story that was happening, and we'll get there in a second. But yeah, Sonata versus Kenta was really good, and I did yes. not expect Sonata to win. I thought for sure Kenta. I I honestly was second guessing our Your picks bracket at this point because I was like, oh, Kenta's gonna go all the way. So we we picked Naito, we picked Offspray, we picked Finley, and we picked Tonga, right? Yeah. Which we got, yeah, two we got out of that four. side, right? Yeah, yeah, we did actually. Okay, so we're not that bad. Yeah, and and Will Osprey, I think, was only because of the injury. Yes, or else Osprey. But I'm sorry, Mark Davis, he really impressed me in this tournament. Same thing with Kyle Fletcher. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Mark Davis versus Evil was really boring to me, but yes. it wasn't because he was bad in the match. No, Mark Davis is that throwback to those like back in that era was that throwback to like that Stan Hansen, Dick, the bruiser type of wrestler, like that throwback type of wrestler. He's like an early WCW guy. Like, yeah, in that like a TA Magnum Nitro. or something. Yeah. 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 Very much so. Very much so. And he, he, he very much impressed me. Yeah. Will Ospreay. That's the reason why he went out in the second round. But he, that um, was a banger match. Yeah. It totally was. Um, and there were two teammates, so it's not something you expected. You know what I mean? Two stable mates. Yeah. And then um, yeah, go ahead. Once again, upset by Evil versus Jeff Cobb. Yeah, like like Jeff Christy Cobb beats... is getting dogged left and right, like to the point where I can't even believe now that they're giving him the US title shot because of the way that they've been treating him lately in New Japan. And Maybe they, the they're US... not a tag team anymore, by the way. They're not, right? It it it's now Hanare and Khan are the tag team. Are the tag team. Okay. I think Cobb is I think Cobb is on his way, maybe on his way out. But then why would he get this title shot? Maybe it's a showcase for AEW. Maybe, maybe he's going to AEW. Or Ring of Honor. Either way, same same thing. But and you know what I mean? Why, like... That could be why the title match is on American Dynamite. TV and yeah. not Japanese. Um, well, we know kind of you know, Kenny Omega is going to win because he's definitely carrying that belt into Forbidden Door. When we are going, we got yes, tickets. We got ladies. tickets. We, we didn't got even tickets, tell anybody. Yet. Yes, we got tickets to Forbidden Door too. Look for us. We are on the camera side, so you may be able to see us. Section three twenty. So basically, right in front of the camera, off to the left a little bit, two or three rows in. I will be the drunk person being held up by the other two people. Yes. Um, I will be the one holding the sign that says hi putty. Oh, you know what? You don't drink, so this is gonna work out very well. Exactly. Um, so you could be the designated holder. We'll st- yes. we'll stand on each side of you and you could just hold us up. Um that, that works. So Chase Owens versus Naito was actually surprisingly good. Yeah. Um I it, but Chase Owens did this to us a few times in the G1 tournament yep. where we weren't expecting it to be a good match at all. Chase Owens seemed to have gotten himself in a little better shape. Yeah, and he's not as uh, I I mean it sounds mean, but he's not as flabby as he used to be. He's not. He's not. Uh, that it's funny that you said that actually, and I don't know. So it it's kind of where we expected. I mean, yeah, this this is exactly what we expected. We didn't expect Kyle Fletcher to, uh, Fletcher to get where he got to. No, and same thing I with Haran uh, so Aaron Hanare. On that side, Tonga versus Hanare was pretty good. My issue that I'm starting to have with Tonga now is since he's being really exposed as a singles wrestler, Mm -hmm. his matches are all the same. It's starting to show some of his weaknesses. Yeah, it's it's not even that he's bad. He's just every match is the exact same match. Yeah. And it's kind of just like, uh, but uh, Hanare is getting is has been really impressive. Yeah. Um, Goto versus Kyle Fletcher was a banger. Yeah. Like I said, uh, these are guys that are tag team guys that have been putting on, like, these guys were pushed, and I honestly think that Fletcher and Davis, Aussie Open, will be defeating Bishimon for the... Uh, oh, for sure. For I sure. Think it's this, at, this is I a think plan. The, that match is going to happen at Sakura, right? Yeah. And uh, so I, I have a question for you, but I'll wait sure. till later, because I don't want to get in the way of this, because it's off topic. But yeah. Great O'Conn versus David Finley was surprisingly good. Mm-hmm. 
Um, well, and it's not, I shouldn't say surprisingly because David Finley, we've kind of grown to like since the, uh, what was it? The G1? The G1, he, yeah. And then he kind of vanished. But um, then he comes back as the leader of the Bullet Club. What, and, and this whole storyline now is building, but it's not till the next round where it really kicks in. It starts building, yeah. So, great O'Con. Um, we both hated him. And I like, like him now. He's like the greatest human being on earth. He's saved like seven people in real life. So, you know, uh, he's like an actual superhero. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Kelly's favorite person. But and... I mean, he even like even that, the fact that he's been putting on decent matches too. Yeah. Uh, but like the next one, I got to say, this might have been the best match of this round. Zack Sabre Jr. versus Shota Umino was yes. so freaking good. Like, and I don't really like Zack Sabre Jr., but yeah. it was so good, and it, it's kind of t- changed my idea on it. So we do get more storytelling for this later mm-hmm. on. But Zack Saber Jr. and TMDK are starting to really impress me, and TMDK yeah. takes and, part in tomorrow's review. And Umino beating Zack Saber Jr. finally, I, and this is this is big for him. The, you could tell he well, we already knew he had a rocket strap to him. Yeah, but right now he's already in space he's he's getting yeah. close to the sun like he's just about to, to the end of this journey he's gonna win something very soon it's coming i think he's gonna beat zach for the belt next i don't because think right it's now be that i think they he, need to they I need to start the changing they need to start changing some belts around right now they haven't changed belts since russell kingdom and something needs to change here now yeah okay you could be right about that actually you know what i take back I was going to ask you the thing later about the U.S. title and Shota Umino, but I think that now it's going to David Finley's going to win the U.S. title. Yeah, they're going to Kenny Omega is going to put David Finley over. That might happen at Forbidden Door. Yeah, I think that's probably what the match will be. Because you're right, Shota's probably not going to go all that. The U.S. title is going to stay with a, a Gaijin wrestler yeah, for a bit. I think that's that's the best place for it. Um. Yeah, but this 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 too was a fantastic match. Great yeah, that, storytelling in this, this one. This was an excellent match. And this is the point where we start getting the dissension. Yeah, in in the the ranks of Bullet Club where we're finding out that El Fantasmo is refusing to let him be part of the Bullet Club because he doesn't like David Finley. So yeah, like there's they, this whole thing they have a history. They, and they already have a history together. And I, I, I'm really like getting interested. Like Bullet Club has become interesting again. Yeah, like the 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 storytelling with ELP right now. I think how they're trying to slowly turn him into this baby face, and then like, can you imagine an ELP David Finley feud for the U.S. Championship? I can, and it'll be good. I think this is a funny thing. I know he's not young anymore. No, but ELP is somebody that new japan is recognizing that just has it all yeah he could do every aspect of wrestling and i think that he's good on the mic he can he they're can, starting he has, to realize we got yeah. maybe this is the his time to get the push and the bullet club rift because we haven't seen a rift story for a while since Tama Tonga left what if what if we get like a storyline where it's two sections of the bullet club where kenta and thing join elp and then Finley and I think so too. So wait, we'll get to that in a second because I I want to talk. Actually, no, we'll just talk. We're talking about both. Yeah. I think this is my prediction right now for New Japan. Okay, TMDK, which we'll get to them. We know something's yeah. happening. They are going to add another other member for sure. Um, On top of the one they added in the final night, yes. And then Chaos is going to add somebody. Um. Uh, Lij is going to replace Sonata. Spoilers, because that's about Spoilers, to happen. Yeah. The world, because we're going to talk about it like right now. And, um, guaranteed Bullet Club is going to add one or two more members. So just this way that they can create a rift and have a large number of people on both sides. Yeah, and factions and, everywhere. And one of them is going to be like Red and Black Bullet Club. Yeah, so I think I, I think that's where going they're going. For some kind of NWO storyline here. Yeah. Which okay, so to talk about Sonata Naito, this was an absolute, really good match. This was and probably the other than this match. This is probably the match of the tournament for me. Like the okay. top three matches oh, okay, of the okay, tournament okay. were Sonata. This one and uh, uh, where is it? 
It was this one, this one, and this one were the top three matches of the tournament. Saber, Saber Umino, yeah. Finley Sonata, and Sonata Naito. Naito. And then if I had to say another one, Finley Umino was good. And Naito ELP. Naito ELP was pretty good. Yeah. But so but so was uh Kyle Fletcher versus Goto. Yeah. Okay, there was a lot of good ones, but those were the best ones that we yeah. said. Um Shingo continues to get dogged. I'm upset about that. But yeah. so Sonata versus Naito, crazy. But we've been talking about this. This is something that I, I But we said up. this in our last New Japan review. We said Naito ne- or Sonata needs a push. He needs something. He needs, he needs to go push. somewhere because he's at the bottom of LIJ. So he's going we, nowhere in LIJ. We convinced ourselves that that uh, Kenta was going to defect from Bullet Club and start a rival faction to LIJ where he would take Sonata because mm-hmm. they used to work together out of LIJ. So I got it a little bit right because Sonata close. did leave. Um, And, oh, I think just five guys, which is what they're called now, is yeah. also going to add a sixth member. I think the whole point of their name is just sixth. so they can keep adding people. They'll just become just seven guys. Just like that's the whole point of it. Because I okay. think they're going to become a big rival, but at this point, so the match ends. But they need and... a well. The thing is too. So Sonata, spoilers. Uh, Sonata joins five guys, four guys. Now they're five guys, and, and he's going to become the leader of this group. Eventually, I think what's going to happen there is he's going to kick Taka out. You think so? Yeah, I I kind of think Taka is going to stick around and be their uh, g- their Gato. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's gonna maybe push him to the side, like maybe somewhere down the road it causes a rift. But well, there is already there's already a little tension there. They're telling the same type of story with Tai Chi and Sonata. Yeah, but Tai Chi's the reason that Sonata even joined true. this group. Um, That's but, true. Okay, so th- he turns on Naito at the end of this match, but this not thing. in a not in a heel way. He just like turns his back on him. Like he just says, "But with you, in your group, I'm a nobody, and it's time for me to become a star." Somebody. And I think he, I think he's gonna. I think he's going to. We'll get there. We'll get um, there. He's so going to be a somebody. He's going to be a somebody. And he's already a really good wrestler. And we're yeah. just really sad how brushed aside him and Kenta both have been lately. And Kenta finally gets some gold. You yeah. know, uh, and Kenta versus, uh, Kenta versus Suzuki is going to be fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And this was a good match, too. Mark Davis has impressed me this tournament so yeah. much. So in this this round, David Finley, Umino, we talked about that. Goto Tonga was mm-hmm. good. Um, Evil versus Mark Davis was a really long match. Too like long, a yeah. really long. The match. fact that Evil made it this far, like Evil made it to the third round, where Shingo was knocked out in the first by a rookie, by not a rookie, but like, but Evil lost to like a guy that they're trying to push by cheating, yeah. then lost to Jeff Cobb, who was like dominating him, mm-hmm. and it's like it just got too much. I was like, oh no, Evil's gonna win this tournament, and we're gonna get a crappy storyline out of this. But Mark yeah. Davis won, and Mark Davis versus Sonata was a pretty good match. Yeah. Uh, also, but a little bit too long. Um, But Sonata kind of dominated. Yeah, he did. Sonata debuted a new look in this match. Oh, yes, he he has the black hair look. Uh, like his Shave before, the beard so he doesn't his, look pri- like a... his, his pre-New Japan look. Yeah. Um, and he looks and... like a badass now. Yeah. He looks uh, like a credible. He looks completely different. When he yeah. first came out, I was like, who the hell? I didn't even recognize him. He looks yeah. like a completely different person. The only reason I knew it was him was he still had that mask. Yeah. So, but I mean, that was a good match. Tonga versus Finley, surprisingly good. Yeah. Even though we've seen the same match from Tonga three times now in this tournament. But yeah, four actually. Oh well, no, he had to buy because he was a champion. Is, three. This was yeah. important storytelling because yes. Tonga is key Bullet Club history. OJ, and, uh, OG, yeah. And him getting him. He keeps getting showcased, so good for him. I think they're trying to really keep him in the company. Yeah. Um. But David Finley looked really good. Won the match. He's he's just as much of a douchebag as Jay White was. As Jay White was. And yeah, I in just, the span I of in the, he's as good of a heel. No, but in the span of uh, six months, Finley went from here to here. Yeah. Like he stepped up his game. He, he's much more psycho killer bad guy where yeah. jay white was like m- like gangster boss like yeah bad guy. whereas what what's it he's rebel finley now yeah and gato's bloody hands yeah and uh breathe with the rebel or whatever the hell he keeps talking yeah. about 
But uh, yeah, that we move on to our finals, which was David Finley versus Sonata. But before we get into that final match, um, there was also a really important match on that same night. On the final night, we had the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match. It was Hiromu Takahashi versus Leo Rush for the Junior Heavyweight. That was the only other time a title was defended in this tournament. This was the best match of this whole tournament. The junior, the Leo Rush match. I'm just, yeah. I'm just gonna say it. This match was yeah. better than any match in this whole thing, even though there was some bangers. The, this mm-hmm. match was so good, like so insanely good. It had just the right amount of length to it, like 25 minutes, whatever it was. But it really told a story in the ring, and having yeah. Yo there, and like, I don't know, Takahashi's really good, man. He's yeah. really fucking good. Uh, but and, again, uh, he, I feel he's stale with that belt now. He needs to move the belt. He's going to win it 10 more times before he retires. We already know this because yeah. not gonna, they're not going to move him to the heavyweight class. So, I mean, yeah, uh, missed opportunity not letting Watto win. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I think this it was a good match. It was, it was so also good. a missed opportunity that Leo didn't win. Yeah. You know what? It's a missed opportunity that they put Shota immediately into the heavyweight. They should have let him win a light heavyweight title. Yeah, or a junior heavyweight, uh, because he definitely could have. Yeah. But either way, th- that match was so good. Like, I highly recommend you go yeah. out of your way to watch that. To one. watch that one. That one was a fantastic, fantastic match. That one there. Um, you know what? I- I'm gonna say this right now. I don't know if you want to write it down, but I uh, that's match of the year. That's in my ca- definitely. Really, you're putting that... this one into the candidate for match of the year. Uh, okay. Takahashi versus Leo. Leo Rush is in the category for match of the year this at this point of the year. And, okay. And uh, El Hijo del Vikingo versus Kenny Omega. Versus Kenny Omega, that one was definitely that. in the category for match of the year, like at least at this point. Like th- those two matches were absolute insanity. Uh, d- that whole episode of Dynamite was great. Um, Yeah, it was a really good episode of Dynamite. Okay. Digressing from the point. Written but, down. The... This match was also really good. Yes. Sonata versus David Finley, and it told such... A... Oh, wait, wait, we forgot something. Mm. So at the end, which this is yes. going to be a banger match, and I think he's going to win. Yes, um, this is where they're going to change the belts. The MDK... Announce a new leader, member. Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder. Zack yeah. Sabre Jr. comes out and announces a new member, and it's Robbie, Robbie Eagles. Eagles, which, which is we crazy. haven't seen in a long time. No, since the tag tournament. And before yeah. that, we also didn't see him for a long time. Since before the G1. And he's, like, arguably on skill, uh, one of the top five junior heavyweights. Junior heavyweights, heavyweights out, yeah. Maybe in the world. Um, And he's never really got uh, that push. push. But I think this is the time. And I think this, yeah. this faction is looking really good. And like I said, I, I definitely believe they're going to add one more piece. Uh, I really, I'm really enjoying it. It's going to be someone yeah. Australian. Yeah. Do they have anyone else Australian? I don't know. Maybe they bring That's Jonah like... back. He's not doing anything. If Jonah was part of this T- TMDK, I think he was. it would be. I know, but like this version of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, just fuck bad dude Tito, though. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so this match was really good. Sonata versus Finley. Yeah, it told a really good story. We get the David Finley confrontation with mm-hmm. ELP. This is this match, right? Yes. And uh... yeah, <laughs> what more can I say? But this was a fantastic. Either way, either either person who who was in this final, we did not expect to be in the final. To be honest, no. I mean, we, David well, I mean, Finley I, was, our, was one of the options. Yes, but it was. We thought it was going to be either Osprey or Naito. That would win for yeah. sure. But like, I, I see what they do now. Do you think this was the plan all along, or do you think they changed it because of the fact that Osprey got hurt? Must have been the plan all along. I don't. I, I think it must have been because here I, we'll I, reveal the winner. The winner was Sonata. Which is like absolutely fucking mind blowing. Yeah. So this I, must have been. I, the I plan never would have guessed this. I thought for sure when we got to this point, Sonata was going to get the look really good in this match and set him up for and something. Lose. And David Finley is going to win and get the push 
but I was like, what they did is so smart because Jay White was just the title holder who just he beat Okada and mm-hmm. like all this stuff with Okada. So do you really want to see Bullet Club with Okada again? And this Sonata thing sets up a whole new storyline because now you've yeah. given relevance to the five guys. You you can I keep think... the you can keep your top title off a Gaijin wrestler. And I think he's gonna win. I, I think, think he's so too. Beat Okada. I think so. I I I would like I would like that to happen. Somebody different. Uh, Sonata hasn't won yet, has he? No. Yeah, he's gonna give Okada a run for his money. Like, I don't, I don't think know Sonata's what Sonata's won anything except the trios. But this Sonata looks uh, like a more credible, like. With the black hair and no beard, he looks like a more credible challenger to Okada than he also the, looks ten years younger than Homeless Sonata. Homeless Sonata, uh, defeated Sonata. That's like, yeah, his his whole storyline, right? Because he was uh like losing his like passion to wrestle, and mm-hmm. then because of Tai Chi, he got it back. And this is a story that's been building since the G one. Yeah. Between Tai Chi and Sonata. And you want to know what's funny? Like the long-term storytelling is crazy because we knew something was going to happen from that, but then it went away. That storyline went away for so long yeah. and then came back now. Like, holy crap. How did we and not it's fantastic. see that? It's a fantastic storyline that's being told right now. So I agree. And I think that that, that faction is actually really strong. You have surprisingly uh, Kanemaru. Yeah. You have your boy Dookie. I mean, he's, yeah, but he's still one of the better junior heavyweights. Yeah. Wait, is he junior still? Yeah, right? I think so, yeah. But you have uh, Tai Chi, though. You have Tai Chi, you have Sonata, you have Takamichi Noku, who's a freaking legend. Yeah. You have Kanemaru, who's another legend and one of the best junior heavyweights they have. And yep. then you have uh, Dudu. Dudu. <laughs> and... It's pretty strong. But and the I thing think is, though, like you're right, though, by else. putting like Dookie, Doki, or whatever, and those guys in now in the same faction with Sonata and Taichi and Takamichinoku, you just added such credibility to this group. Yeah. And you know what? We might finally see what you've wanted for a long time, which is Taichi become an actually important wrestler again. Mm hmm. Because yeah. he's been absolutely like turded on for the longest Floundering. time. Yeah. And long term storytelling, another year and a half down the line, Sonata and Tai Chi, maybe one gets jealous of the other. And you know what? They're gonna win tag team titles. They're gonna yeah. win the tag team titles. Yeah. Like, I could see Zach that. Zack Saber Jr. and Tai Chi were a really good tag team. Well, the thing is too, like, look at this. Like you already told that story with Sonata and Davis. If Davis and Fletcher beat Bishimon. Now you already have another storyline ready to go. That's what I'm saying. And I think you have, I think a lot of people are expecting a feud between LIJ and, and five, the five guys. guys. I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think five guys are going to feud with TMDK. And yeah. it's going to be because of Tai Chi and Zack Sabre Jr. So. I, I think because of the way he just basically turned his back on the team. He didn't low blow Naito. He didn't go heel on him. You know what I mean? He just kind of, I'm done. And that's essentially Suzuki Goon and Zack yeah. Saber Jr. left Suzuki Goon and just made his own faction while the other guys from Suzuki Goon stayed together, right? Yeah. Minus Suzuki and uh what's his name? Lance Archer. Yeah. Who just went and did their own thing. Yeah. But I mean still trying to find that copy of track too. Yeah. This is a good this is a good uh, potential for a feud bait. Yeah. It it told this whole tournament, like, that's one thing they do so well is tell a good story. Like, with the tournament matches, they tell such a great story. The filler matches, not so much, but the tournament matches were good. The tournament, the filler matches are just to get people in the seats. They need yeah. to give, they need to fill out a three hour runtime for the people who paid, right? You're really yeah. just there for the main event. You know, the rest of it's basically just a house show. Yeah. And at I, some I moments, think... it felt like it. Nobody, there's nobody in wrestling, period, that does better storytelling than New Japan because they don't even do any storytelling. There's no yeah. skits. There's no behind the scenes storytelling. It's all happening in the match. And ring. I think the fact that they're able to do that is insane. Like yeah. with a guy coming out and saying a couple of words after a match, it changes like but everything. But the thing is, too, the fact that 
it's even in a different language and it's still connecting with non-Japanese speaking people. It just goes to show the type of storytelling they're doing too. Absolutely. So I, I think uh, this overall, I think it was, it turned out to be a good tournament. I'm happy, super happy with the winner. Like I'm happy the way it turned out. I'm happy that Sonata is finally going to get that push that he deserves. Um, like you said, I honestly think in two weeks time, Sonata will be Tokata. I do too. And if he doesn't, this is going to set up a feud where he is going to win at Duntaku or whatever's next. Yeah. I think it's Duntaku's next, right? Yeah, yeah. In May, I think. Yeah. And then That's Sonata's going to move on to a feud with the title for uh, what's the big one? Well, then after that, it would be uh, the G1 tournament after that, right? No. Well, there's the big, uh, there's one more big one Dominion. Dominion. Right, right. That's in June. Think, yeah. So I think that's because I don't think the IWGP heavyweight title is going to have any play at all uh, in Forbidden Door. No. What, I think what would you say? What would tagged, you say to a Sonata Naito feud? I mean, I would really like it. And I think like, that's, what if this tells the story? This of is this how you year, get the belt back on Naito. I was going to say, what if Naito wins this year's G1 and he goes on to face Sonata at Wrestle Kingdom? And and Naito's that one guy that Sonata can't seem to, and then but you know how that works also. Sorry for this uh, fan fantasy yeah, fan booking. booking, um. But then I do think that makes perfect sense because Naito gets the title back. They can still be feuding, and then dun dun dun, who comes back from injury and steps in? Will Osprey. Will Osprey. I have beef with you too. Three way match for the title. Will Osprey wins by pinning Sonata. So that Naito doesn't have to take the loss. Loss, yeah. yeah Andy, I like that. I, I do think, not just because he's my favorite, but I do think they have to give Naito back the title one more time. He, he has to, one yeah. more title run, and then put him in the never open weight. Uh... Yeah, or let him win the U.S. title or something. Right? He's like your biggest draw. Nobody gets cheers like Naito does. Like the way the crowd reaction when Naito when his music starts is insane. He's more mind you, Sonata than when he was in his home. Uh, I think yeah, Sonata the, was crazy. And because the finals was in his hometown, the crowd went nuts for him. And I agree with that. But Naito gets a bigger pop than Okada and Tanahashi. Yeah, and those are your three biggest wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely agreed. So that is what it is. So overall, what would you just the tournament matches and the tournament itself? Let's give that a score. Okay, uh, like just one score. Do you want to give multiple scores? I, I think okay. I think we won't count this score, but I think the tournament as a whole was a solid like seven point six, seven point seven. I, I think gave, I, I gave the tournament as a whole a seven four. Okay, so we're like close. I think that yeah. the finals is what like I would give the score to. The um, finals was a was like an like the so actual final those... the final match itself was like an eight. Yeah, the final and, two matches, and then you you count those ma those matches. Let's say the semifinals. I'll say okay, all in if you include that light heavyweight match, which I think should count. Yeah, I'll I'll give it a seven seven. Okay. What did I say? 7-4, counting the light heavyweight match. Seven, I'll give it two more points. I'll give it a 7-6. So we're still in that same range. Because I do think that like that, that match was super important. Yeah, it and was. Like, and it sets up something for the long term, too. Oh, man. Leo Rush is just like on some next shit. So you said 7-7? Seven, seven? Yeah. Like, okay. I know, I understand he's a very difficult person to work with in his past. Yeah, but like the fact that anybody he's so talented Ruff, though he, he worked with and left WWE and then mm -hmm. Impact and then AEW all three companies had him and, and lost him and now he's in New Japan just tearing it up yeah I think also working with Yo has, a, had, has had an effect on him too yeah I think so and I hope they never break up and I think chaos is much stronger for, for having Leo Rush in chaos. Yes, that's right. I would, I'm just wondering what happened to Teton because I haven't we haven't seen Teton at all. Yeah, they announced him and then he disappeared. He was in that the tag tournament and that's it. Yeah, he was and really then, good too. Yeah, I think 
Now that you told the story with Leo Rush and Yo, they both lost to Takahashi. They're going to go back to the junior tag division. Let's get them in a feud with Catch 2 2 again, maybe even beat them. Yeah. They, put, they, some, put some gold on both. them, put a little shine on their group. You could move those belts. Yeah. I think that's a good thing. So, um, again, um, few highlight matches to watch. Go watch the junior heavyweight championship match. Watch the final. Watch the two semifinal matches. Watch Sonata Naito. Watch Night uh, Naito Phantasmo. Uh, Osprey Davis is worth a watch. And I would watch the whole thing except Toru Yano versus Mark Davis. Yeah, I think that's the only match I just wouldn't watch. Yeah, yeah, agreed. I can agree to that. This one was pretty bad too, even though Jeff Cobb was good. I mean, uh, nothing with evil is very uh, entertaining. Yeah. But because yeah. to go is gonna come. Yeah. And show with the wrench. Oh, we didn't mention that uh, El Desperado was unmasked. Oh yeah. Uh we won't but we're not. <laughs> but I mean that's gonna play into that six man tag match again. So Oh, you so... know what? That's in the other person. Mm. Desperado uh never joined a group after Suzuki Goon. Split no, up. but he's still El Desperado still with Suzuki and Narita. Yeah. That's their little group. And uh Lance Archer. What are they called? Son of Strong Style or something? Is that what it is? Yeah. But uh yeah. Uh overall, New Japan knows how to do tournaments. Sonata's your winner. Um, any final words before we end the no? Well, with that out of the way, guys, thanks again for joining us. Tune in tomorrow where Campo and I will have our review of Impact Sacrifice from Windsor, Ontario, the home of Scott Demore. So join us tomorrow for that.